Jason here. We're back on the TFNN uh, homepage. Now, what I want to talk to you all about, we were talking about the Tiger Dollar sales, and this kind of corresponds a little bit in what we're going to go into now, which is the Mastering Probability newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Now, you've heard me on here before, talk with Steve Rhodes, and uh, I love this newsletter. It's extremely thorough. Uh, Steve's show is obviously so interactive. If you haven't checked it out, really recommend it. And uh, if you haven't gotten Mastering Probability before, well, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee for all of our newsletters. And if you are a current subscriber as well, there's no better time to go ahead and up on your Tiger dollars. Again, we have up to a 40% bonus, and that is just going to be savings, savings, savings across the board. And uh, that will be applied uh, to your newsletter purchase as well. Steve Rhodes, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob. Yourself today? I'm doing well. I Maybe you can lament with me this humidity we're having in florida uh it's it's killing me but uh humidity it's in the 70s down here in delray beach uh, in my house yeah right exactly <laughs> i was about to say how is that anyway yeah, yeah. well you know the, the the cool thing i mean not a, necessarily that it's a cool thing with regard to a uh, hurricane that hits you know the houston type area out there yeah. so feel for those folks and and i thank goodness only category one but you have to admit at least on the east coast of florida um, we've had some really nice weather, so to speak, because it sucked out a lot of that, right. uh, you know, rain, still humid, but at least it sucked that out. So those are the nice things about those storms. But, you know, it's 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 coming back. And but the reality is it's it's warm everywhere. Right. So it's not yeah. just it's not just Florida, you know, that that's in fact, what's kind of interesting about Florida is we don't really ever get up into the hundreds other than the feel like temperature. out there, Right. You know, but not from a degree standpoint. So um, yeah, it's. It's that is something to, to be thankful for, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and and mostly most of the year, you know, we don't have too much to complain about. So um, fantastic. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. So that's what's going on. Well, so Steve, so, what are we uh, looking at today? Yeah, good, good question. Now, I tell you what, I've I received I've received a number of questions um, from folks about whether or not the stock market is getting ready for yeah. a major market crash. So I thought, hey, why don't we discuss that? Uh, I can show you what my charts are are communicating to us, and we and we'll go from there. So this is an actual photo from a guy named Walter Thornton. He was a he was a trader uh, back in the 1920s, and he lost all of his uh, money uh, during the 1921 crash. So he was actually offering. I mean, it's a real live individual and a car, and that's uh, he was he was selling that uh, Sportster for a hundred bucks in cash roadster for a hundred bucks in cash out there so is a stock market getting ready for a major market crash well, we talked about 1929 so we take a look at the pattern so as you mentioned we've got tiger dollars out there it's a great time to test drive a mastering probability because the things that we're going to talk about today first they work for all time frames so even though we're going to take a look at a bigger picture daily weekly and monthly time frame out there if you're an interday trader these tools work uh, for that. And those folks that turn into the uh, tune in to the uh, Trader's Ed show, they get to see us use that for all different time frames. But when it comes to identifying, you know, major market tops or bottoms out there, we're not using those intraday charts. In fact, the daily time frame chart uh, becomes the intraday chart for the weekly and then for the monthly out there. So if we take a look at the 1929 top, what we'll see is this, this had formed a daily, a weekly, and a monthly, what I refer to as a Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top. And the way those are confirmed are either bearish reversal candles form or price closes below what I call the oscillator and change line. It's another tool that I use that's really helpful to help us understand what the market is communicating to us. So uh, in the Mastering Probability subscription, uh, comes with uh, two one-hour classes that focus specifically on this uh, pattern out there. Uh, how to, It would allow people to identify when the potential of the next bear market uh, might form out there. But also, again, if you're an intraday trader out there, it's going to assist you with regard to understanding the same type of uh, top. And it's a matter of being able to identify where support is at out there. So in 1929, what we know is on a daily, a weekly, and a monthly time frame, we had topping signals that warned those traders that uh, something could go awry out there. Well, let's move off of the 1929 um, market, and let's take a look at now I had snap. I took a snapshot of these pictures at 1230 this afternoon. And so the Dow still had what's referred to as a Gartley sell pattern. What I mean by that, folks, if we take a look at the uh, Dow uh, Dow Jones uh, Industrial uh, Indice out here, the chart that's on the very left-hand side, this top where there's a blue arrow with the pattern that I refer to as a TD9 count top. And that's a great, that's another tool that I also trade. So if you subscribe to Mastery Probability, you'll get access to a workshop that'll teach you that. This goes ahead, moves lower. So a Gartley sell pattern 
is where you believe you have a market that's made a strong move in one direction, in this case here, to the downside. And what you're trying to do is look for an entry point in that next move to the downside. Well, we received that um, a few uh, a couple weeks ago, and that's where uh, we had a A to B equals CD pattern. And a way that I confirm a sell point on an A to B equals CD pattern or a buy point, on a sell point, you need a bearish reversal candle. And we formed this little bearish sash candle out here where my cursor is at. And not until price closed above 35,971.23 would that pattern be negated. A guy named H.M. Gartley, it's referred to the Gartley pattern out there, in his book um, on page 222, what he's basically telling us is that in a bear market, we don't know if this is a bear market or not just yet, but in a bear market, what you want to do is you want to sell the first Gartley pattern. So the Dow Jones on a daily time frame has that pattern in play. Uh, earlier in the day, that uh, level of 35,971.23 on the daily time frame was tested. It was rejected. So only if that uh, price closes above that will this pattern go away. When we look at the weekly chart and the uh, monthly chart, they both have roads momentum indicator tops. So very similar to what we took a look at for the 1929 time frame. So that question about a major top, very pertinent out there. At the 2007 top, and I'm going to do here, uh, um, Jacob has switched to a different instrument so people sure. can see that these <clears throat> patterns work on, mul you know, they work on everything out there. We're really agnostic to what the instrument is. It's just a matter of uh, putting the patterns in there. So at the 2007 top, the S&P had a daily TD9 count uh, top. The weekly and monthly had Rhodesman indicator tops out there. So again, we had precursors to expect or anticipate a uh, move to the uh, downside out there. And uh, so that, again, if I didn't mention that, uh, we've got a, a one-hour class that's included in that subscription for Mastering Probability. At 1242 this afternoon, I took a picture of the S&P 500, and the S&P 500 might form a TD9 count top between today and Wednesday. This is for the daily time frame. So on a TD9 count pattern, we're really looking at bars 8, bars 9, and the bar following bar number 9. Well, today we can see that we spiked above Friday's high. That sets up bar number 8 out there. So we could get a top uh, for the daily time frame for the S&P between today and Wednesday. If we look at the weekly uh, chart out there, it actually confirmed a TD9 count top on Friday. And remember, the top can be on the bars following bar number 9. So we should have a completed TD9 count top pattern come Friday. On a monthly basis, it's only in bar number eight right now. Uh, again, when you get to a high in bar number eight, it can be a top out there. But we wouldn't get confirmation on this monthly chart right now until we get to September, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we do have, uh, you know, this is potential. We want to watch that. And so folks should tune in to uh, the 11 o'clock show. Of course, tomorrow I'm going to fill in for Tommy. And I'll do my show at 9 o'clock. So it'll be a good time for folks to, to fill in there. Looks Absolutely. Like, uh, now, now, the one thing here that I'll mention to people. The one thing that can stop, even if we get all these signals out here, we can't think in just in terms of ourselves. Right now, with all the geopolitics that are going on, what we have to realize is that there's global capital that's finding safety inside the U.S. This chart right here shows that today we have new all-time highs that formed in the U.S. dollar, euros, yen, corona, francs, the Chinese yuan, and the Canadian loonies out there. And this is the one thing that could really make a muted move down lower out there as capital tries to flee those areas out there. So that's what I've got for you. Steve, that help? thank you so much. So you'll be on tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern, 9, correct? 9 a.m., you got it. Steve, thank you so much. Folks, we'll be right okay, back. Take care.